For our next talk, I'd like to welcome to the stage Laurel Dixon Bull and Randy Langehenig. Laurel is the IBM Offering Manager for Urban Code Deploy. She manages the business end of the product, focused on pricing and packaging, while also keeping close to the product's technical capabilities and client feedback. In her 17 years at IBM, Laurel has worked in a variety of areas, including internationalization and localization, the client early access programs, and software release management. Randy started his career at IBM right out of college. He started in the testing organization for the AIX development team and has had different roles inside of IBM from developer to testing lead uh, to client facing technical specialist and several others. Randy's area of focus though has been DevOps, including build automation, automated testing and continuous integration and deployment. He has been applying these DevOps principles with the clients that he works with for over 15 years. And he's passionate about seeing folks achieve success with their business goals. Today, together, Laurel and Randy will share with us how to transform legacy IT into a ZOS DevOps team. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, when I came to KubeCon, I did not expect to hear about the mainframe. This reminds me of a time I was speaking with uh, an IT leader of a, a large enterprise, and they shared with me, my organization is a museum of technology. And I think this is true for many large organizations where they have many different exhibits that uh, are different technologies from different eras, and they all coexist within the same organization. And so for many of you, I'm curious if you wanna share in chat, uh, how many of you have Kubernetes, but you also have virtual machines, and you also have bare metal, and you also have uh, ZOS. So uh, these teams need to work together, and sometimes it can be very, very difficult across those different disparate types of technology. So today, Laurel and Randy will share the core principles and fundamental concepts behind how to transform a legacy team into a modern one, and they'll even give us a live demo of how GitLab Ultimate on ZOS works. Let's check it out. Thank you for joining Randy and me today for this talk about GitLab Ultimate for ZOS. The title of our talk is How to Transform Legacy IT into a ZOS DevOps Team. Randy and I, we work um, in the IBM DevOps team, and our mission is to help customers deliver quality software faster. Randy is a DevOps technical specialist at IBM, and I am a product manager in the IBM DevOps team. In case you're wondering, ZOS is the operating system used on mainframe computers. You might be wondering, why are we talking about ZOS at KubeCon? Do they have anything to do with each other? Well, yes, they do. Uh, most, if not all, organizations are investing in hybrid platforms and solutions. So most organizations have a combination of legacy and more modern technologies and platforms. And this has been accelerated by the pandemic. Everything has changed since the pandemic. More work is done online, more buying is done online, and we have very little tolerance for slow or clunky systems for purchasing or working. Consequently, agile teams are working hard to go faster to deliver changes and legacy teams are struggling to keep up. GitLab offers a DevOps platform to help the agile teams work faster and the legacy teams to become more agile. This year, IBM and GitLab partnered to add ZOS features to GitLab Ultimate. IBM, of course, brings a lot of experience and skill in mainframe or ZOS technology and GitLab obviously has a lot of experience in software delivery platforms, which uh, with key collaboration, integration, security, and delivery capabilities. To give a quick refresher on why GitLab is so important to DevOps teams in general, take a look at this summary from a Forrester study about how DevOps a DevOps platform like GitLab solves common problems for businesses. In Forrester's study, they found that more than half of the customers surveyed 
use six or more tools in their software delivery tool chain. And over 70% that 70% said that end-to-end -end governance or visibility is a challenge and no wonder with six different tools. Um, and understandably, almost 70% said that handoffs between the teams slows down product delivery. The reality is that organizations could improve their software delivery speed and quality by reducing the complexity related to having multiple tools, um, like one for code repository, several for test, collaboration, deployments, etc. Because when you have all these tools, many people are involved just to maintain them, and then the integrations between the tools can be tricky and awkward. And this complexity also drives up cost and, and it, while it slows down speed. Now, imagine that we're talking about a ZOS software team. If you're new to the topic of ZOS, keep in mind that 70% of the world's data still resides on the mainframe. And if you're using the Z operating system yourself in day-to-day -day work, you know it's a legacy system, but it still does most of the processing and transactions for banks, retail, and healthcare systems today. And if you spend more time with modern technologies, you might not realize that the mainframe can process over 30 million transactions a day. That's even more than Google. And IBM's latest mainframe hardware can process up to 146 million transactions per second. So that's why it's still around and vital to the global economy. And here's a fun fact. The Z in ZOS means zero downtime, zero downtime. It's not only incredibly fast, it's stable. Hardware related faults are less than three seconds a year or seven nines. That's 99.59% availability. It's really the holy grail for availability. And you don't have to replace the Z machine every year. And machine hardware is designed for redundancy and uh, very few uh, um, operating system updates. Another fun fact is that 90% of credit card transactions go through Z systems. For example, if you pay bills online, you use a, a nice front end that's user friendly, it's modern looking. It might be personalized with your name and your account information, but the actual transaction processing that pays the electric bill, that's done on the Z back end. And this is true almost anywhere. If you order a Porsche or a Corolla on a cool web front end and you make all your selections and pick out your accessories, maybe you use a marketplace and then you can follow, follow the delivery of your new car down to the hour. Um, you're using the front end, but we know what system is transacting all that data, right? That's the ZOS system. So through the partnership with IBM and GitLab, IBM has added functionality to the GitLab platform for Z developer teams. The biggest contribution is the build system for ZOS languages like COBOL and PL1. This is the build tool uh, called Dependency-Based Build or DBB. You plug DBB into the GitLab platform and you have the ability to adapt GitLab to the needs of the ZOS team for ZOS application builds. GitLab for ZOS also takes care of the translation for ZOS languages from the Git repository and adds a CI runner for Z. And we have more features underway. There's also easy integrations with other IBM Z tools like those for tests, deployments, development, if you want or if you already own one of these specialist tools. So why is GitLab so valuable, and that is specifically GitLab for Z, so valuable for a Z team? Well, GitLab addresses major pain points common 
to the ZOS software development. First of all, that those teams are generally isolated from the rest of the application team. The Z team works separately. Um, and so many times when I visit customers and I meet an application development team and I ask, you know, who runs your mainframe dev team? I'd like to talk with them. Nobody knows. It's not always the case, but a lot of times it's true. They're so separate, they don't know each other. So DevOps really should be bringing everyone together. So if you're doing DevOps, um, but we can see this, this isn't often true. And that's why we're offering GitLab for Z to make that possible. Another pain point for the Z development team is that they use separate non-agile tools. The Z application team typically uses legacy tools. Uh, a lot of times they're green screen and these legacy tools are not agile and changes to Z code is actually seen as risky. The Z platforms run enormous applications. Now keep in mind that source code management is the core of, of every, everyone's pipeline. And in ZOS application development world, these tools are decades old. The ZOS legacy tools have become a hindrance to the Z dev teams and it's also becoming clear that they cannot move as fast as the distributed teams. So having a modern core, uh, modern source code repository like Git gives the Z dev team all the code at their fingertips, not just the code being changed. And once you have a more agile SCM and with a build tool like DBB that can build not um, only what's changed, not the entire application, like is done with the legacy tools, development becomes much more agile. And then there's this opportunity to move faster because you know you can only move as fast as your slowest contributor. And then finally, another pain point is that ZOS development skills are becoming rare. And this is something to consider ZOS developers are quickly aging out and retiring. Many opted to retire in the wake of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, the average age of a Z developer was over 55. It's under 50 years now. And by the end of the year, we expect the age to be 45, fast approaching. So we're losing a lot of the older devs and we're quickly onboarding replacements. And onboarding to a modern tool like GitLab is gonna be a lot easier than a legacy tool. And you can move your developers around now that you have a common platform. They don't have to be so siloed and the, the silos won't be as stark at once you can move people around on the same DevOps platform for the enterprise. And the pandemic has also accelerated interest and investment in hybrid platforms and solutions to support the business flexibly. So hybrid systems provide security, stability, and the scale of the mainframe, and also the agility of the front end systems. So really development needs to be hybrid as well. And there really should be one platform to support all developers. So these things, the siloed nature of the Z team, the tools they use, the rarity of Z skills, they all combine to slow down delivery, introduce risk, and keep special Z skills in a separate team. And those are the big problems. A DevOps platform like GitLab reduces the tool chain complexity, replaces expensive, slow legacy tools, and unites the Z developers with the distributed developers. Now they can both be more agile. So with that, now that I've given you a bit of a runway and context, I'd like to give Randy a chance to talk. Um, Randy is going to give you um, a demo of GitLab with dependency-based build to illustrate the ZOS build capability and a couple other things. Uh, Randy, um, I think you want to see a chart first and then you'll go into the demo. Right? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Laurel. All right. 
Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to be playing the role of a mainframe developer that is responsible for an application called Catalog Manager. Our team is working to modernize the way we develop our Z code to adopt more agile methodologies, moving away from the waterfall approach we used to follow. To help us with this modernization, we are using GitLab, as you can see on this slide, to drive our development, including using GitLab from an SCM, you know, and Git from a source code management perspective, as well as using the really nice pipeline capabilities from a CI/CD perspective, as you see on the slide. We're also using some great IBM Z DevOps tooling to help us achieve our goals to deliver quality software at a much quicker pace than what we had in the past. Let's go take a look at uh, this new modern environment. Let me share my screen. All right. For this demo, I'm going to be working again with this application named Catalog Manager, as you can see here. This is my project within GitLab. And this application is written in COBOL, and it uses CICS, or Customer Information Control System, to handle the transaction processing on the Z operating system. Now, let's take a look. Um, one of our, our testers found a bug in the program and opened a new issue, as you can see here. Let's open up that issue and take a quick look. All right. We can see that this issue has been assigned to me, and uh, I've got a milestone as well as a due date here and some labels. All the great features within Git that we all, or GitLab that we all love. Um, you can see in the description of the bug, he's provided a really nice uh, set of screens uh, to show me. This is sort of the, the uh, 3270 view, green screen view of the application. And you can see that as he gets to our, our item, this item 0010, and clicks on that, the description that's displayed for this item on this page um, is showing a debug message. This is what we're going to fix in this uh, demonstration today. So what I've done is I've actually already created a merge request for this, this bug. Let's go to that merge request really quick here. And you can see that I've already committed some code uh, to fix this problem. Let's look at that, that the code change really quick in, in the code. Before I do that, though, I do want to show you with IBM WASI Analyze, if you are a new developer working on a program like this one, Catalog Manager, using WASI Analyze, we provide a developer with a visual of the interactions of between the programs. So you can see the sort of a call chain that's happening with your program. And I can see here, as before I did my changes, that we were making a call to an assembler program called wait. And this isn't actually a good thing. This, this looks like a bug to me. So having this visualization of these Z related programs is very helpful for our developers, especially as we onboard new developers as Oral's mentioning earlier. Okay, so let's go back and look at our code change actually. I'm gonna open this up in the web IDE within GitLab um, to show you the changes that were made actually here. And if we scroll down, you can see that there was a, a bit of code that I had to uh, change to fix this bug. And here it is right in this area. And you can see that it was making a call to that assembler program called wait that we saw earlier in that that was the analyzed view now i've commented out these lines to correct this bug i believe i have and and i've run um, my pipeline against my feature branch to do some validation of those changes um one thing i just would like to point out here from a, a mainframe developer perspective a lot of our clients they use an uh, intelligent IDE. Examples are IBM Developer for Z, which understands, you know, COBOL code, PL1 code. It allows you to kind of, you know, view your COBOL code and your co copy books if you have those side by side as you're doing your development. It's it's really quite nice. And if 
you want to, a lot of our clients are using Visual Studio um, to do that same type of work from an IDE perspective. And of course, that's easily done as you integrate with GitLab um, and with our IBM tooling. So this looks great. Looks like this is was committed for our merge request. Let's go back to that merge request really quick. And for the purpose of this demo, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, of course, I could have somebody on the team that would approve this change. In this case, I'm bypassing that. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this uh, merge request as ready so that we can take a look at a running pipeline and kind of what's going on behind the scenes. I'm going to go ahead and click the merge button here. Again, there would likely be somebody else on the team that would do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it here for us so we can take a look at a running pipeline here. Great. So this will begin to run our pipeline against the, in our case, the main sort of the master back to main is our development branch. And um, so we're going to begin the running the pipeline there. Let's go ahead and take a look at it as it runs. You can see now it is running the build phase of this pipeline. And this is really where IBM dependency based build comes into play as Laurel was mentioning earlier. And it's what it's doing, it's initiating what we call an impact build, or sometimes it's referred to as an intelligent build. And I say that in that it detects the code that you modified or changed since the last commit to development, and it will compile that code along with any other program that was dependent upon the code that you changed. So it's, it's, it's much faster um, than what we used to do in the past, because in the past, as a developer, we're working on a program or that included, let's say, 100 COBOL programs it would have to compile all of those and it would take quite a bit of time. You can see that our build is already completed here, uh, which is fantastic. So it's it's an intelligent build. And it, along the way, let's take a look at that build process where DBB was called. You can see the, the output here. Um, as we scroll up in this, this output log, you can see that the build finished with a clean state, which is fantastic. Good to see that. One of the things as we're moving faster, you know, and becoming more agile, we want to do that, but we also want to ensure that we have good quality code. And for the mainframe developers, we IBM has an ability to run Z unit test cases, very similar to what you would do on the, the open system side or cloud native side, where you have N unit or J unit type of tests that are run automatically on at build time. We're doing the same thing here from a Z unit perspective. And again, it's intelligent. It knows what code you changed and based on the code you changed, it runs the, the corresponding um, unit tests based on that code change. So um, we can see the results. And another thing that's nice here is we transform those results into a J unit uh, report format um, that's able, you're able to see within the GitLab interface, which is really quite nice. All right, so we're moving. This is fantastic. Now let's let's go back to the pipeline. We can see now that it's running the analysis phase, and we can see that um, it run it's running a code quality check. Essentially, what's happening here? This is, again is adding another level of quality, um, you know, completeness with our work. It's checking to see if the code you changed is meeting uh, rules. Um, that your company has set set up to ensure quality. And th these rules are specific to COBOL or PL1 programs out of box, but you can write your own rules as well. Um, rules can, a few example rules, one being avoid language elements that are obsolete in Enterprise COBOL 5.1. You can check for that. And if you find those, you can alert the developer of that that situation so they can remediate it. Uh, another example of a rule is, you know, avoiding a select star in your exec SQL code. If you had that in your code, we'll, we'll identify that and alert you of it. And of course they have different severities. So if it's a high severity, we'll fail the build at that point so that you can uh, remediate that issue very quickly. Very quick feedback loop for the developer. 
again, ensuring really good quality code. And then, of course, you can see my pipeline's already run. That's how fast it is. It's already completed the packaging phase. And packaging, what we're doing is we're integrating with Urban Code Deploy to package up the artifacts of our build and then creating a immutable artifact that's pushed, in this case, to Artifactory, which is a definitive asset repository. Um, and it also integrates with Urban Code Deploy to make it aware of this new version. The version label is typically the build tag or the pipeline IID in this case. But so you have really nice traceability uh, all the way back to the build. Um, and uh, this is fantastic from that perspective. But you can see this is using a command line client for Urban Code called BuzzTool to, to integrate and to push these artifacts over to these different tools, Artifactory and of course, Urban Code Deploy. And then to finish this all off, the remaining steps now are just to do a deployment. So we have triggered an automatic deployment in this case into our integration environment using the integration with Urban Code Deploy. And this integration environment allows us to do some initial testing of our changes um, integrated with other applications just to make sure there's not any, um, you know, integrated integration issues that need to be resolved. In this case, we've done our testing, everything looks okay. So we've set up our pipeline in GitLab to allow us to do a, a manual, you know, sort of step here of initiating the deployment into our acceptance test environment. I'll go ahead and click that button. That acceptance test environment is actually a much um, more production-like environment with a lot more data. Um, and so we can do additional testing in that environment before we go into production. Now, if we go back into Urban Code Deploy, this is the Urban Code Deploy web console. Let me uh, log in really quick to it. Um, we're going to take a look at the application catalog manager. It leverages a really nice application model. So I can see first part of the model are the target environments. And then, of course, we have our components uh, here that are being deployed. And what it tracks inventory. It knows what's deployed where, which is really, really nice. Let's look at the history. It's got a rich history of everything that's taken place. You can see we've added another layer of governance here just to add an approval for this deployment into our acceptance uh, test environment. Let me go ahead and respond to that so we can kick off that deployment there. And when I do that, you can see this, this interface gives us a really great trail of audit. We can see the sort of the who, what, when, where, how details at the top. We can see who approved it. And then, of course, if we go down further, we can actually see the, the deployment process as it's running. And you can see how quickly it is. This is so great because in the past with our legacy solution from a mainframe perspective, when we needed to promote a change for our application from dev to test, we couldn't just deploy our changes. We had to deploy all of the programs and promote all of them to test and then promote all of them to production. It's a very time consuming process and, and risky as, as Laurel was mentioning earlier. But you can see here, there's no need. It's really simple and much more agile. We're able to deploy our updates into the environment, you can see it's complete. And, uh, and in this case, it's doing a phase in of the, uh, the Kix application so that it's updated um, to, to include the new changes that we've just put in place. So with that, I'm gonna go back to Laurel so we can see the end result of, of this, these changes. Randy, thank you, that was great. So we have now back in, in the issue that you originally found for yourself, right? Um, a screenshot from the original report, the person who originally reported the problem with the, the, the good result, right? You don't have that debug message in there anymore and the catalog entry is, is perfect. So that was a great demo. Thank you for that. So what you really showed was, um, how the pipeline leveraged dependency-based build to perform an intelligent build of the application that includes quality testing, 
with ZUnit and code quality to ensure the, that the code meets uh, standards of quality for the corporation or the enterprise. Um, and you also showed how you can perform inter, uh, incremental deployments quickly to the ZOS LPAR on the mainframe system using IBM's Urban Code Deploy. So this is an exciting new world for our mainframe teams using more modern tooling to meet goals of quicker delivery uh, with great quality. So we'll end the presentation with a suggestion that you um, listen to the replay of a webinar that uh, a, a colleague, Chris Trowbridge, did with a customer from One Main Financial and they talked about using GitLab with DBB for IBM Z applications. And it's a, it's, it's a really interesting webinar and there's a lot of discussion about um, the cultural differences and how to introduce you know, new modern tools to, to uh, legacy uh, development teams. So with that, I'll, I'll end the webinar and I wanna thank you all for, for joining us today. Thank you.